Okay, hello, I'm uh, Vilma Papasava. I'm a journalist and I'm here today uh, to ask Lord Smith to share with us some of his wisdom and long experience regarding the um, creative industries, especially in the UK. Chris, welcome in Athens. Welcome in this conference. It's an honor and a pleasure to have you here. Uh, before we begin, I want to make a very brief introduction of Lord uh, Smith. Um, of course, if I were to list all his achievements, there would be no more time for discussion, so it will be very brief. Uh, Chris Smith, the Right Honourable Lord Smith of Finsbury, was a Labour Member of Parliament for the Islington South constituency in the middle of London for 22 years. He was a Secretary of State for Culture, Media and Sport in the UK from 1997 to 2001, and during that time was the first politician to champion the creative industries in the UK. He stepped down as an MP in 2005, started up the CLOR Leadership Program for Future Leaders in the Arts and Culture, became the chairman of the Environment Agency in England and chairman of the Advertising Standards Authority for the UK. He's a member of the House of Lords, chairman of the Art Fund, chairman of the Donmar Warehouse Theatre, and the Wordsworth Trust, and an honorary fellow of Pembroke College, Cambridge. So, Chris, the story goes like this. It was back in uh, 1997 when the newly elected government of Tony Blair decided to establish a task force in order to register the creative activities in the UK. So you set about a mapping and you came out with some very impressive and interesting findings. A, map, a, do, a mapping document that actually showed the dynamics of this new uh, construct, which is called creative economies, because, uh, creative economy, because I think it didn't exist before. So since you were the head of the Department of Culture in that period, I'm sure you can tell us one or two things about the sector. Um, but um, before you tell us what is happening, what has happened in England for the last 15 years, I would like you to give us your own definition of creative economy, because it seems to be a very heterogeneous area. Of, of course, Felipe <laughs> tried to clarify uh, the concept, but I would like your own definition as well. Uh, <clears throat> well, uh, thank you uh, very much indeed. Um, the, uh, uh, you're right, when uh, we came into government in uh, the UK in 1997, um, I, I sort of felt instinctively that uh, the, uh, the arts and creativity were not just important aesthetically uh, and important for our souls and our enjoyment, uh, but were also important economically. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I discovered was no one at that point had any idea what the economic worth of uh, the arts and creativity were. And so we sat down to try and uh, understand what the extent of the creative economy was, what made it tick, and um, uh, what the, the trends were, and how government could help. Mm -hmm. uh, the um, first thing, of course, we had to do was uh, decide what is a creative industry. And um, uh, the, uh, uh, the definition we came up with uh, was, this is not an industry that is about making material things. Mm -hmm. This is an industry that starts with an idea and an inspiration and turns it into intellectual property. And those two parts of the equation, the original creative idea from an individual or a group of individuals and the creation of intellectual property that can be then shared around the world, uh, those two parts of the equation are the two essential things uh, that uh, make up, uh, in my view, the creative industries. And if you then say, well, what in practice does that mean? Mm -hmm. 
Felipe has already uh, given us much of, of an indication uh, of that. We, we listed in the mapping documents that uh, we then did, because after having decided what is a creative industry, we then had to try and establish what the extent of the creative economy uh, was. The industries that we listed, and, and this here is it's now 15 years old, is the mapping document that we produced. Uh, the, uh, the industries that, uh, that we included were uh, software design, publishing, music, television and radio, advertising, design more generally, both within companies and uh, of itself, uh, the performing arts, film and video, uh, the uh, 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 architecture, crafts, interactive leisure software and games, and fashion. Uh, and that group of industries, uh, I think that definition that includes that group of industries has actually stood the test of time. Uh, and as I understand it, uh, it's a section of economy that can be enriched every a decade or not because it contains so many sectors. I mean, tourism, could tourism be a part of creative industry or not? Tourism, I would say, is not of itself a creative uh, uh, industry, but it, uh, it um, spins off and develops from uh, creative uh, industries. Uh, in, um, uh, in both the UK and in Greece, uh, uh, tourism is uh, very strongly driven by heritage, by uh, the creative arts, by uh, uh, the uh, things that people come to, uh, to see. Uh, and it's also inspired by uh, some creative arts. Uh, if you think about England, uh, uh, for example, uh, huge numbers of people come to see the castle in Northumberland uh, that uh, featured very strongly in the Harry Potter uh, of uh, course. movies. Uh, they come there not because they just want to see the castle, but they come there because they've seen it in the movies. And there's a, the, there's, there's a link between that, um, uh, that bit of the creative sector and the tourism economy. Uh, there is an obvious interconnection there. Um, I, I would like to ask you to explain to us how can individual artistic work become a part of the family of creative industries? This is something we would all like to understand. Um, well, I'd say two things mm -hmm. uh, in answer to that. The first is uh, the countries around the world that are strong in the creative industries are also countries that have a strong traditional cultural sector the, um, right. in, in theatre and, uh, uh, and uh, orchestras and dance and, uh, uh, and the visual arts. Um, it, because the two have a synergy. They, they, mm -hmm. it, it, you, you, you can't really have a strong film and television and commercial music um, uh, uh, industry unless you have a strong traditional theatre and music uh, industry. The two feed off each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the, uh, the second thing uh, I would say is that um, uh, one of the characteristics of the creative sector of the economy is that it's full of small entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, yes, there are some major US companies that dominate the world of film, for example, but on the whole, if you look across most of the creative sector, uh, it, it is populated by small-scale, small and medium-sized enterprises. And very often, these are people who've developed creativity um, during their education. They've perhaps done a course in design or fashion or uh, 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 whatever. Uh, and they then set up themselves uh, perhaps with a friend in a small enterprise. And one of the really important things for developing a creative sector in any economy 
is to help to foster those small startup enterprises because they are the seed corn for the future. So what steps did you take to help and foster those small scale enterprises in Britain? Um, probably not enough. Um, uh, I, partly because it took years to convince the rest of government in, uh, uh, in, in Britain that this was important. Um, uh, the trying to talk to the finance ministry um, uh, or the Ministry of Trade and Industry about the creative sector of the economy. It was like talking to a stone wall. Right. Um, and uh, eventually, after about seven or eight years, they got it. Mm -hmm. uh, and now, if you listen to um, uh, most uh, ministers from right the way across uh, uh, the government of all parties in uh, uh, the UK, they will say how wonderful the creative industries are. It, but, but it took some time to get there. Uh, however, we, we identified a number of very important things uh, that uh, either help or hinder mm -hmm. uh, young startup uh, entrepreneurs. The first uh, uh, is education, uh, and uh, Felipe touched on that in, uh, mm -hmm. uh, in his presentation. Um, uh, and the work that Ken Robinson did uh, is actually still really important in this. Uh, because we, we do tend to, in all countries around the world, we educate people for, uh, uh, we, we, we educate creativity out of them. Mm -hmm. we, we, we try and focus them on being rational uh, and, uh, and, and so all of that's terribly important. But we, we need to have an education system that nurtures and stimulates yes. creativity and takes a creative spark that someone has and encourages them to use it and develop it. Um, so the first thing uh, to do is to make sure that the education system uh, is working properly. The second thing uh, uh, to do is to make sure that a young startup creative entrepreneur can have access to finance to help them to start up. And they won't need very much money. They may just need money in order to rent a workshop and mm -hmm. uh, buy a computer system or whatever. Um, but uh, they need a little bit of money. And uh, uh, on the whole, banks don't speak the same language as creative entrepreneurs. Um, yes. And, and helping to make those links uh, is something that government can help with. The third thing is uh, access to workshop studios and accommodation. One of the, the things about creative uh, enterprises is they tend to want to cluster together. It's quite, it's quite the opposite from the rest of the economy where competitors want to be apart from each other. Uh, in, in the creative sector, people want to cluster together and spin ideas off each other. There's, there's much less of a, of a sense of antagonistic yes. competition. Uh, and uh, so there is a role particularly, I think, for cities in helping to develop uh, affordable workshop space for uh, the creative sector. And the fourth thing I'd put on the list, uh, in some ways uh, absolutely the most important, is copyright protection for the intellectual property that is created. Uh, because the, the entire economic value of uh, the thing that the, uh, the artist has created the entire economic value is held in the intellectual property and the protection that it has, uh, which is why, uh, and especially when it can be transmitted across the world in seconds, it can be copied very easily. Uh, um, it, it's why having a hold on the rights to that intellectual so property is very important for the artist. You think the legislation should be more rigid? 
I think the U.S. The, in the U.S. are pioneers in the protection of the copyright or not. The the the, the legislation I itself it, it, it is actually fairly rigorous. Mm -hmm. um, it's the implementation of the legislation that's that's difficult, and it's particularly difficult in the, some of the really rapidly growing parts of the world. Right. I, I would like to, to to ask you another question that I think it, it's very interesting for us here in Greece that as we all leave Europe as well um, in a period when the threat of economic stag stagnation looms over most West, do you think that creative economy can be an antidote to this malaise or uh, is it just a romantic idea? It, 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 it's not a complete answer. No, of uh, it, it, it is part of the answer, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I, one of the features of the creative uh, uh, economic sector, and this is not just in the UK, but if you look across the last 20 years or so, uh, the uh, creative sector of the economy has tended to grow at about twice the rate of growth of the mm -hmm. e economy as a whole. And especially in advanced economies where you don't have access to uh, cheap raw materials and cheap labor, something that, that where the, the raw material comes out of people's heads uh, and where the economic value comes from the inspiration, mm -hmm. uh, actually it, it makes a lot of sense um, uh, to recognize that this is one of the ways in which we can generate wealth in the future. And uh, that's true of economies large and small. Uh, some of the uh, uh, smallest countries around the world have made a huge success of parts of their creative economy. If you look at New Zealand, for example, mm -hmm. uh, and what they've uh, been able to do with the film industry, um, uh, hugely successful. Uh, what Denmark has done with the television uh, uh, industry. Uh, the, 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 there are very good examples mm -hmm. of small economies around the world uh, where they have found something that they're really good at and they've made it into something that has huge growth. So if we in Greece wanted to follow the successful example, what do you think would be the first uh, key steps to take? Before that, I have to tell you that creative industries in Greece constitute an uncharted territory still. And although they do exist, they are not characterized by exportability, if I may use that word. Um, the, uh, it's not for me to, uh, to, to, to say what, what Greece should, uh, uh, should focus on. What I do think, however, is that uh, it would be uh, really sensible for uh, the Greek government and the creative sector. This is something to be done in partnership. Not, uh, it's not just something that you rely on government to do. Uh, to set out, first of all, and do what we did, which was to map the sector. Mm -hmm. what, what, what bits of the sector are already strong? Um, how can they be? Uh, uh, developed and, uh, and encouraged. Uh, one of the things about this is it doesn't need very much government money uh, mm -hmm. to, uh, uh, to help. What it needs is government facilitation and uh, making sure there's, there's the right sort of platform there where the entrepreneurs can go out and do things. Um, and b what we're all finding, uh, both in Greece and the UK at the moment, is there is no government money for anything. Yes, uh, we all know but, that. But, There's um, no funding, no but, government funding. But uh, what we can do uh, is make sure that government is, uh, it, it is helping by uh, the way in which they bring people together, by encouragement of the private sector, by making sure that the education system is working properly. Um, you, you have talked about donations through social media that could be an alternative to the declining public-private funding. So how, how do you think this uh, would work? Um, 
what what I've uh, frequently said is um, uh, that uh, in the UK uh, the, uh, the the traditional um, uh, uh, artistic uh, scene has been supported by a mixed regime of funding. Uh, we 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 haven't gone down the United States route uh, where pretty much all the support for uh, the uh, performing and creative arts uh, comes from the private mm -hmm. sector, nor have we gone down um, the route that, uh, uh, for example, happens in quite a lot of Germany, uh, where there is very intensive state support uh, for the arts. We, we've had some state support, uh, we've had some local government support, uh, but we've also had quite a lot of private philanthropy uh, some corporate sponsorship, and of course, uh, where you're talking about the performing arts, uh, uh, the paying public. Uh, and it's that mixture of different sources of funding uh, that I think has, has actually stood us in quite good stead in, um, uh, in the UK. It's helped us to survive when various bits of that equation um, uh, get into difficulty. Uh, yes, you know, and what I, I've read, you know, creative industries thrive in recession. What's your opinion on that? Um, I was reading that the, the, the example of the New York City that was saved by the creative industries during the gloomy periods of 70s and the 80s. Um, some creative industries mm -hmm. thrive mm -hmm. in recession. Uh, some are uh, very uh, dependent on the performance of the uh, overall economy. Uh, take two examples of that, advertising mm -hmm. uh, and architecture, uh, both heavily dependent on how much construction uh, work is happening and uh, uh, what companies are investing in um, uh, uh, trying to sell their products. Um, uh, both of those are, are rather sensitive indicators for how the overall economy is, uh, uh, is doing. Um, there are other parts of the creative industries which do seem to thrive despite uh, what's uh, happening in the uh, economy as a whole. And if you take the creative sector overall, even when the British economy went into recession, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the creative sector of the economy as a whole still grew. It wasn't growing as strongly as it had been, but it still grew. So you really believe that creative economy can do a difference? It, it, it absolutely can. Uh, at a nation state and at regional state as well? Yes, it absolutely can. Uh, the challenge for Greece Mm -hmm. is to uh, find those areas where there's real potential strength mm -hmm. and to, uh, to, to concentrate on, uh, 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 on developing those. Uh, the, um, uh, uh, and um, uh, it's, uh, it, it, it is a slow process. It won't, it won't happen overnight. Yeah. You can't wave a magic wand and mm -hmm. create uh, successful creative uh, enterprises uh, uh, instantly. But what you can do is, um, uh, uh, over time, help them to build up. Thank you. Thank you.